In today's video, we're gonna take our boomerang and add some basic sound effects and speed variation just to give it a little bit of extra interest as we throw it. Hi, my name is Michael, and welcome to my 2D action and adventure RPG tutorial series. We are learning how to build a top-down 2D game that features action, adventure, and light RPG mechanics all in Godot 4 using GDScript. All right, so first let's grab a few things that we're gonna to need to make this tutorial happen. Um, I'm gonna to go to my player audio folder and open that in the file manager. And then we wanna open our downloads folder if you've downloaded. Now again, as usual, you can get these assets that I'm using on my HIO page linked in the description, or you can use your own. So I've got uh, two new sound effects that we we'll use here, boomerang and catch. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy those into my folder here. Go back to the project. And then one last thing we want to do is we want this boomerang audio to loop. So what I'm going to do is select it, go to the import tab next to the scene tab. And let's see, loop mode. You know, it would be nice. I don't really know how to do this. I'll have to learn how to set it up so that it could detect from wave. But I'm going to set it to forward, click reimport. And now this wave file will repeat or loop. All right, now in order to play that sound effect, let's go back to our scene. And in the boomerang, I'm just going to add, uh, let's see, an audio stream player 2D that we can use to play that sound effect. I'm going to drag the boomerang on and just set it to autoplay. Now, if we run our game, then we should have a boomerang that makes a sound effect. Let's give it a try. Okay, easy peasy. That was easy enough. Um, but I want to make this sound effect a little bit more dynamic. So I'm going to open up the Boomerang script. And let's see. Doot, 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 doot. We've got an acceleration, a max speed. Um, these things are fine right now. We do need a way to be able to kind of catch and manipulate the audio. So I'm going to get the audio stream player 2D. And I like to rename it to just audio because the audio stream player 2D is pretty long. The first thing I want to do with this audio clip is cause it to change as the uh, as the boomerang movement changes. And so we'll simply do this in our physics process of this script. So outside of our if statements after them, right? Let's go down here to the bottom of the function. And I wanna do this. I wanna calculate a new variable. I'm gonna call it speed ratio. And essentially what this is, is, is it like um, when we look at the variables we have here, our max speed, the I want to get a ratio from zero to one um, of what the boomerang's current speed is, right? Zero being like no speed and one being full speed. And the reason I want it to be a ratio is because it'll be easy to work with. So the the speed ratio is equal to the speed divided by the speed max. Or the max speed, not speed max, max speed, just like that. So that'll give us a number, right? Zero to one. And then we're going to go, we're going to grab our audio and we're going to set a pitch scale. And what the pitch scale does is scale the pitch, right? Higher or lower. And so for right now, let's just set it to the speed ratio. And let's just run the project and see what that sounds like. <laughs> Pretty exaggerated, right? I mean, it gets like super slow. But you get the idea. Now, depending on the speed of the boomerang, we're changing the sound effect a little bit or a lot of it. So let's do this. Let's make it more subtle. And you can put export variables to this or just change this. I'm going to multiply the speed ratio by 0.75. So now it's going to be a number between 0 and 0.75. But then I'm going to add 0 0.75 to that. So that means that the, the, the pitch is going to range anywhere from 0.75 to 1.5. Now if we give that another try. Kind of cool, I think. I like that. I don't know if you guys like it, but I'm going to stick with that. So feel free to adjust it. Now the next thing I actually want to do is we've already got a reference to our animation player. I want to adjust the speed of the boomerang animation. Let's just go back and play this. And right now, the boomerang animation continues to spin at the same rate, no matter what. And, I mean, it looks fine. 
but something I thought would be fun would be to vary the speed of that. So let's get our animation player and let's set the speed scale. And again, let's just set this straight to the speed ratio so we can see what it's going to do. Um, a speed scale of one is normal speed. Zero is paused essentially, right? Or stopped. Two would be double speed. So, so what this is going to do is it's, it's only going to slow down from the normal speed. So let's have a look. And that, that's not very cool, but you get the idea, right? We're adjusting the speed of the playback of that. Okay. So let's do this. I want to do, I want to start at one so that the one is the slowest speed that we'll get. And then I'll, I don't want to, I don't want to have it speed up too, too much. I want it to be somewhat subtle. So this is what I settled on here. Um, let's go ahead and give that play. Okay, cool. I don't think that's realistic for Boomerang, but it just adds a little bit of flavor to it. In fact, I mean, we could play with this, right? That's pretty subtle. Let me try 2.5 times 0 0.25, and let's see how that looks. Okay. In fact, I think I'm going to keep that for now. So there we go. We've added a little bit of interest to our Boomerang just with a couple simple things here, right? So we've just adjusted the audio and adjusted the animation player. Okay, now one more thing I wanna do with this boomerang is I just wanna give it a sound effect when the player throws it and catches it. Now, I think ideally you'd want to use a separate sound effect for throwing and catching. Um, I'll leave that as an exercise for you if you wanna do that. But what I'm gonna do right now with this video is let's just add a single sound effect and we'll play it on both. Okay, so you could just export two variables if you want. So I'm going to export a variable called catch audio. And this should be an audio of type audio stream. Go ahead and save that. So now when we look at our boomerang in the inspector, we've got a new audio stream here, right? And we could quick load and look for catch, or you could drag it, you know, from the folder there. So now that we've got an audio stream here, there's a couple ways we could handle this. Um, we could play it. If we try and use this audio stream player, then it's going to override the boomerang sound effect that we've got playing. We could add another audio stream player. I think the solution I want to use, and that's and it's not because it's the best for the boomerang, but I think it's the best for future usability, is I want to actually utilize in our player scene here, which you know you may need to open yours up. We've added an audio stream player, and it's got a max polyphony of four. I'm going to just put that up to like, I don't know, six. I don't know if it really matters. But if we use this audio stream player, then it's already originated at the player. And I kind of want to build a way to easily tell this sound uh, or this audio stream player to play something. So we'll do it now for the boomerang. And then in the future, if you ever need any other script to be able to play a sound from the player's location, then we could just use this, right? So, so again, I'm kind of doing it a weird way, I think, with the boomerang, but I did it out of a desire to make it easy to access that. So I'm going to go ahead and save everything we've done. Uh, the first thing we need to do, we need to go to our player script, which I've got open, and we need a reference to our audio stream player. So I'm just going to drag this in here. We can go ahead and call it audio. Save that. And then we need to find our player manager. So if you followed along with this tutorial series, you've got a player manager, just open that up. Within our global player manager script, scroll down to the bottom somewhere and let's just add a new function and we'll call it play audio. And in fact, we wanna probably pass in an audio stream. So we'll pass in a variable called the audio, we'll require a variable called audio and it'll be of type audio stream. Okay, so that's the sound we want to play. And then you could add other things here like pitch or decibels or whatever, but for now we'll just do a simple sound. And then we already have a reference to our player in this script, so we can just go player.audio.stream equals, and then set it to audio, right? Oh, there's an underscore, missing an underscore on that. Okay, and then next we can just grab that audio. Oh boy, did I get that? And just call play on it. 
Okay, so a real simple function in our player manager that's gonna access this audio player on the player. So now if we go back to our boomerang and come down here and then just anywhere at the bottom of this function, we'll just go to, we'll grab our player manager and then just call that new function. Oh boy, if I could spell it, uh, play audio. There we go, play audio. And then we'll just play the catch audio. So this is going to play that when we throw it. You heard a little bit of a sound effect there. Okay. We, we want the same sound effect when we catch it. So I think what we'll do is just right in here in our return, right before we cue free this guy when it's caught, right? When it's close enough to the player, we'll just call that same line of code, right? Player manager dot play audio, and we'll just Pass in the catch audio. All right, so now if we run the game and throw our boomerang, we'll have a nice little audio effect applied to it. Nice. Okay, there we go. So quick and straightforward tutorial today. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to add a magnet to our player to allow him to pick up these items, even if he's not standing right next to him. And as always, I appreciate everybody who wa watches, likes, comments on my videos. If you want to see what's coming up next, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching.